This video is sponsored by Bank of Texas. You start each day committed to pursuing better for your employees, clients, and communities. The team at Bank of Texas shares that spirit. We come in every day ready to fuel growth in North Texas and financial success for our clients. Our breadth of services and advice-driven approach allows us to compete nationally, but our deep connection to this community, our community, keeps us focused on being good partners. Good afternoon. It is great to see everybody here today and welcome to our inaugural Bank of Texas Speaker Series for 2023. My name is Trey Moorsbach and I'm the truck chair for 2023 and I'd like to start by recognizing and thanking our sponsors for today. Back again is title sponsor, Bank of Texas, thank you. Our series sponsor, Stuart Title, and our media partner, the Dallas Morning News. I'd also like to thank today's speaker, sp speaker sponsors, Global Pro, and the American Airlines Center. Without your generous support, these programs wouldn't be possible. Can we get a quick round of applause for our sponsors? In our ongoing effort to enhance member education, I want to start the year by reminding everyone of our mission. Trek's mission is to cultivate relationships in the commercial real estate industry, which is what we're doing today, to catalyze community investment, influence policy, propel careers, and develop the leaders of tomorrow. It's a fairly aspirational mission we hope to we strive for every day in our jobs. Member engagement is also a top area of focus for Trek. As your chair, I want to challenge each of you to find a way to plug into this great organization and the many different opportunities it offers to help fulfill its mission. We expect 2023 to be a huge year for Trek community investors. As we wrap up our inaugural Dallas Catalyst project and move forward towards uh, working out Dallas DCP 2.0, Dallas Catalyst Project 2.0. As the recent Trek CI Chair, I've been heavily engaged in our community investment work over the last several years and can speak firsthand about the impact that Trek CI's work has had in serving our Dallas communities. With your help and under the leadership of this year's Trek CI Chair, Mike Geisler, thank you, Mike, we will continue to create the lasting economic impact that energizes our Dallas neighborhoods and changes lives. As I mentioned before, I was a member of the ALC class of 2000. I used to say 1999 and they corrected me. I think it's, it's 2000 now. Either way, it was a long time ago. As a member of the ALC class of 2000, I can attest there's no better organization to help develop your career potential as a leader. From ALC to the educational programming provided by Trek to the lasting work done by our DEI committee and its chair, Kim Butler. Trek has and will continue to shape generations of leaders within the Dallas commercial real estate community. To this point, Trek's mentor program applications will op up in, open up in a month or so. We need mentors and mentees, so if anybody has an interest, please find one of the Trek folks or staff after the meeting and they can get you some information on that. In the public policy world, every year and every election is critical, perhaps no more than now in 2023. As anyone who does work around the country can attest, Texas and Dallas in particular are great places to be a commercial real estate professional, and we take our commitment to keeping it that way very seriously. Next month, TREC Public Policy Committee and TREC members will head to Austin, along with our peers, to lobby on our behalf. We will also interview and support candidates for mayor and Dallas City Council to help ensure that our city elects continues to elect visionary leaders. I encourage all of you to join us in supporting these important efforts by joining the TREC PAC and engaging in our policy work. Finally, over the last three plus decades, strangely, two of which I've been engaged with, which is fabulous. Trek has shown what we are able to accomplish when we set ambitious goals for ourselves, work together, which is why you are here today, and strive to build the city we all imagine. With your leadership and continued active engagement, there's no limit to what we can accomplish this year and the decades to come. Thank you for your membership. Thank you for your engagement. I look forward to a great 2023 together. And without further ado, I'd like to call to stage my dear friend and 2023 Program Committee Chair, Bill Brokaw. Trey, thank you. Um, 
I do have to wear readers as well, and I do have large print. And uh, but just I want to thank Trey. He's going to be our chairman this year for the executive leadership and the board, and we're excited to have him. So it's real easy. If you're interested in track, call Trey. Okay. Um, we've got a big year planned this year for track programs. Um, so we're going to get kicked off with a great conversation with Tom Gillardi today. And uh, we want to thank our sponsors again, Bank of Texas, Dan Easley, Stuart Title, Melissa Eastman, Dallas Morning News as our media sponsor, and then obviously Global Pro as our speaker sponsor, Rob Bowlesby, and American Airlines Center, Dave Brown. So also registration is live for our Market Matters, which is coming up March 8th. Uh, we have Michael Dardick from Granite and Adam Sapphire uh, from Trammel Crow Company. And it's going to be a great conversation on uptown office environment and just market dynamics. Uh, we also will have another speaker series in May, TBD on the speaker, but we've got a very special surprise, I think, in order for that one. Not to be announced yet. Um, so many sponsors still available for market matters and speaker series throughout the year and go to uh, call myself or you can call Travis Reynolds at Trek. All right, thank you to our moderator and speaker today. Amy Hollyfield is our moderator. She is a Michigan native and a graduate of Northwestern University, which makes her in that area of the country a big hockey fan. She joined Dallas Morning News in March of 2022 after two decades with Tampa Bay Times which is Florida's largest newspaper, covering everything from sports to politics. She helped launch a fact-checking website called politifact.com in 2007 and helped guide the website into national prominence, including the 2009 Pulitzer Prize for national reporting. Thank you, Amy, for joining us today. Um, Okay, this guy is busy, so bear with me. Uh, Tom Gillardi, who is the Dallas Stars owner, we thank you for being here as well. Uh, he began his career in the Gillardi family business in Canada at just the age of 14. He started as a busboy in the hotel and worked in every aspect of the business since. After graduation at the University of British Columbia, he took over as regional man manager of Sandman Hotel Group he became president at 23, and at 26 became president of Northland Properties Company, Corporation, which he has served ever, ever since. Under his leadership, Northland has focused on hospitality, real estate, construction, and sports and entertainment brands. His portfolio currently includes Sutton Place Hotel Company, Chop Steakhouse and Bar Group, Moxie's Restaurant Chain, Revelstoke Mountain Resorts, Sandman Hotel Group, and other real estate developments, especially here in Texas. Sandman Hotel has a location in Plano in the Legacy area that is operating. Sandman Hotel will open in April of 2023 in Fort Worth, downtown. It's a redevelopment of a 20-story Wagner building and a planned Sandman Hotel and Moxie's restaurant in Las Colinas is on the, on the board as well. Also, he has purchased a site, several sites in Uptown, one being at Harry Hines and Payne, which he's looking to build a 350-room hotel, Sandman Hotel there as well. Also, he has two sites uh, next to the AAC, adjacent to the AAC, flanking that, uh, that he has for planned development in the future. Also, he's looking at a 49-story condo project at 44 West, Sorry, 44 East in Austin, Texas. Correct? That's complete. That's complete. All complete, yeah. So he's a big fan of Dallas real estate and Texas real estate. <clears throat> Lastly, he acquired the Dallas Stars franchise in 2011. Stars have been to the playoffs the last three or four years, including a run to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2019 and 20, and currently sits atop the NHL Western Conference today. He does have ties to Texas as his mom is from Longview, Texas, and uh, he has two sons at SMU with another one on the way to SMU. So, big, strong uh, uh, SMU sponsor. In his free time, Tom enjoys spending time with family, cooking, and playing golf. Let's welcome Amy and Tom.
Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Trey. Looking forward to a very cool conversation here. Glad you're here. Let's start with the hot topic in Dallas, which is the stars who are doing great this year under the new coach, Pete DeVore. Wondering what it looks like from your point of view. What are the highlights? What are the anxieties? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to win. And I think that the hard part about being involved in sports and being a fan is, you know, the expectation to win. And the problem is whenever you play uh, a game, there's a team on the other side that's trying to win too. And uh, so it's, it, it's, it's tough. I mean, look at the Cowboys, 20, this is the first playoff game they've won in over 20 years, I believe. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty amazing franchise. It's, uh, it, it is, sports is a, is a tough beast. So, um, pretty excited about what transpired. We looked at our team <clears throat> under Rick Bonus and, and the way we were playing and we wanted to make some changes in the summer and I uh, think, think uh, uh, we were pretty forward about we wanted to score more. We needed to be more, more offensive. Uh, and not give up our identity uh, defensively, and that was the, the the role that we asked Pete to uh, to do. And Pete took uh, Pete looks like the perfect fit. We're we're now among the top scoring teams in the league, and we're among the top defensive teams in the league. So, you know, you can't win playoff games without being able to play defense and and have solid structure. And so we've we've tweaked our team to score more and uh, and not give up what that that defensive identity which we've worked so hard to build. Uh, first under Ken Hitchcock, and then through uh, you know Jim Montgomery and Rick Bonus. So it's uh, we're we're in a pretty good pretty good position now. And the greatest thing that our our best players are young. And if you look at other teams in the league that are at the top of the standings, their best players tend to be old. And so for us, we're uh, we're we're pretty pleased where we sit. So it's a pretty interesting story how you got to be the owner of the Dallas Stars. You had a chance at a couple other franchises. Um, <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Uh, it's pretty interesting how you became the owner of the Dallas Stars. Uh, you had a chance at a couple other NHL franchises, um, but it's sort of kismet that you ended up here, given, given your family, your mom growing up in Longville, and you've got family in Burleson and Fort Worth. What's, tell us that story, it's pretty interesting. Well, I think back in the 90s, uh, sorry, early 2000s, um, uh, I, I started to think about, you know, I'd love to, love to be involved with the NHL and, you know, maybe I could actually own a team. And so uh, I came very close to buying the Canucks, my local hometown team, and, and that didn't work out. And so, um, but through the process, I uh, gained a relationship with, with a commissioner and, um, and then I, I looked at another opportunity to, to buy Atlanta um, and with a, with a play to move it to uh, Hamilton, which is Greater Toronto. And, and that didn't work out. <clears throat> and so uh, along the line, and then luckily the, the Dallas Stars came available. And so uh, the commissioner called me and, and said, I've got a team for you. I think it's going to be great, a great fit. And it was Dallas. And so... Um, Worked through that process. Through, took uh, took at least a year and a half. It was complicated with the stars being owned by the by the Hicks family with the Rangers. So it was a it was quite a process. But hung in there and, and ended up with with uh, with this team in an amazing market. So I feel very fortunate. Where does your interest in hockey come from? Did you play hockey in Vancouver? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in in Canada, it's our national sport. Although that some some people say it's lacrosse, which doesn't make any sense, but uh, it, 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 but every, you know everybody plays hockey in in Canada. Uh, I played um, you know uh, high level for a long time, and and then played men's leagues for a long time, and and so it's it's my favorite sport. Mine too. All right, so you bought you bought the stars at a pretty good price, uh, coming out of bankruptcy, two hundred forty million. But now they're reaching a valuation of a one billion, and I'm wondering what's your take on the valuation you've seen in the stars compared to the rest of your business um, and how how it's going? Yeah, well, you know, sports teams uh, generally have been have, have turned out to be great investments, and um, um, yeah, hockey's no different than than uh, than other sports. So yeah, it turns out it's a it's a 
a good space. You know, whether it'll continue to be a good space or not, uh, I'm not sure. But you know, it's all about it's all about live content, and live content uh, have uh, has appreciated. And so, um, uh, you know, again, I feel fortunate that that's all worked out. Uh, although, as people tell me, uh, my father says to me, you know, it looked like you did a good thing buying that team, but uh, until you sell it, what does it matter what it's worth? So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, but it, you know, as, again, it's, it's nice. It's a nice situation uh, to be in, but uh, you know, I have no intention of selling the team. That's the thing about valuation, right? Yeah. Okay, so Dallas has become sort of a second home for you. You talked about your sons at SMU, soon to be three. Um, wondering, uh, you've got vast business interests already, he already here. What, what's attractive to you? What do you see in this market that's really sparked your interest? Well, I'm not popular with the rest of my family. My mother and my cousins and my uncle are all uh, Longhorns. And so um, it's not, it hasn't been easy dealing with them, uh, sending my kids to another school. But selfishly, uh, I spend time in Dallas when I'm here, and it was, it, that connection worked out. So I think it's a fabulous school. and, and uh, and again, feel very fortunate that that uh, that they've been accepted there. Um, you know, what can I say about Dallas? I mean, uh, Dallas Fort Worth is is the most amazing market that uh, I'm exposed to anywhere that we do business, and so it is such a, a powerful, explosive, growing metropolis for so many reasons, and so. Um, you know, one of the things about sports is, you know, it's one thing, you know, you own a team, but really the, the value and the future of your team depends on what market it's in. And, you know, fortunately for the Stars, we're in this, this beautiful market uh, here in, in Dallas where, you know, it's, 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 deep, with, it's deep with people who, who uh, you know, have disposable income, sponsors, uh, population, and just all those things. And so... Uh, I think uh, I think you know right now we're we're we're, we're in challenging economic times, but uh, Dallas Fort Worth is uh, is going to continue to outperform, in my opinion. It's it's such a desirable place to be. Everybody wants to live here. Uh, the economics, the business climate is uh, is is one of the best, and so I, I think the long term prognosis for uh, for DFW is 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 super exciting. Okay, so you've got hotels, restaurants, other business interests in five countries, actually. United States, Canada, England, Scotland, and Ireland. Pretty impressive. What's, what's your outlook on, the, on the, all the markets you're active in? What's, what, you know, I bet there's some ups and downs around that. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll start with the you know, UK and Ireland, which is kind of slow and steady, not magnificent. Um, <clears throat> you know, Eurozone is not going to keep up with the U.S. in terms of uh, economic growth. But for us, it's diversity, it's, uh, it's geography, and, uh, and, and, and you know, the reason we kind of ended up in, in, in that part of the world is my brother ended up wanting to live there, and so he decided to go into business, and so we decided to go into business, and so we own hotels there, and we're developing and buying hotels there, and so it's been a, it's been a good business. Um, and I think it should be relatively stable, uh, uh, but again, absent, uh, I think, uh, explosive growth. Um, you know, Canada is, uh, is a very stable, great country. Um, I'm bullish on Canada. We are uh, really, um, uh, one of the things that, uh, that's driven Canada for, for many, many years is natural resources, uh, energy, oil, and gas. And, uh, and so our, our country's done fairly well, though, when, while those, uh, those businesses have been rather depressed. Politically, oil and gas has been a, a challenging space to be in in Canada. And so I think with any luck with some political changes, um, I think oil and gas is poised to, uh, to have a pretty good run. And, uh, and I think, you know, geopolitically, what's happened with, with, with the world is, you know, we have to stop buying things that we need from bad people. And by bad people, I mean Russia and, and Saudi Arabia. And, you know, in Canada, it's, you know, we don't want to go and pull the oil out of the ground uh, because that's not cool. But we're going to ship it across the ocean from Russia and from Saudi Arabia. So finally, I think people are waking up to the fact that, wait a second, we have to stop empowering those countries 
and we have these resources, let's go get them ourselves. So uh, I think the prospects for Canada are, 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 are really solid if we can get natural, our natural resource uh, 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 back booming where, where it ought to be. And, uh, you know, the U.S., I, I, I can, it's, it's such a, a, a monster. I mean, it's the largest economy in the world by a country mile. And I don't think that's going to stop. And so, uh, obviously, some pretty big headwinds here coming through, coming through COVID and, and all of the things going on around the world. And we're dealing with, uh, with high inflation and interest rates that we haven't seen in 12, 15 years. And so it's, uh, you know, caused some shock to people in this room, obviously, in real estate. We, we all feel the effects of, uh, of inflation, construction costs, um, uh, interest rates. And so... It's a little, little, uh, little bit uncertain as to when things will, when things will, will, will get moving again the way we're used to. Um, but you know, real estate's cyclical. Um, it's always been cyclical. It probably always will be cyclical, and we're in a cycle right now. So, um, but again, overall, uh, I'm more fluent on 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 Texas, and and I feel very strongly about Texas, and generally with the U.S. Um, certainly concerned of the political situation in the U.S. Um, it seems very polarized, you know, more polarized than I ever remember. And so I'm not sure what risk that's going to create, but, uh, but overall, um, you know, the U.S. is where people want to be, it's where money wants to be. The U.S. dollar will continue to be the, 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 the world currency. And so uh, I, if you're going to be anywhere in this world, I think you want to be in the U.S. All right, so what new development or project in the DFW area are you most excited about? Well, I'm a, little, I'm a little surprised that to a Dallas real estate conference you invite a Canadian to come down and talk. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best here. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're excited about the market. I think one, one thing that, you know, the decision to buy the stars was, you know, we're sitting in Canada. We're the largest hotelier in Canada, uh, my family. And we're, we, we're, you know, how are we going to get to the U.S.? Because sooner or later we've got to get out, outside of our own country we already started in the UK, but you know, US is this big opportunity, and you know, it's it's like it's like a it's like a you know like a mosquito arriving at a nudist camp. It, it's you know, like you kind of know what to do. You have no idea where to start, and so <laughs> so the stars just felt like that opportunity. That okay. Um, you know, we're going to buy this thing, and then I'll start spending time down here, and and knowing how the you know the wonderful future of DFW, and you know, you think about what it was in 2011 to what it is today, it's it's a different animal. I mean, it's just an incredible place, and it was incredible then, but it's far more incredible today, in my opinion. And so, you know, it gave me the opportunity to come down and start to understand the market, and you know, it's a weird place. I mean, the metro metroplex is 90 miles wide, and so I never understood. Real estate, because you know where I come from in Vancouver, we have mountains and oceans and rivers, and we have you know pockets of land, and there's scarcity. Where you come here and you drive around, and it, there's just land everywhere. And so it, it was, it took me a long time to really understand, uh, you know, the value. Uh, and so, and I wish I would have understood it sooner, because I should have bought a lot more land when I first got here, and I didn't. But uh, uh, so I made that mistake. But. Uh, um, I, I'm excited about the market. It's a it's a it's a departure for us. It's a wonderful place to be you know to be headquartered and start on the line. So you know we've got two hotels um, in various stages of development in uh, in, in Las Colinas. A uh, new one about to open in Fort Worth. We've got not to repeat Bill, but you know projects in downtown and and in Austin we're we're even more active. So we've got we've got four ongoing um, multifamily developments in in Austin. Um, we've got a uh, a massive site, which will be some sort of a mixed-use thing uh, in in the north side of the city, and uh, so we have lots going on in Texas, uh, and, and and super excited, and and we're actively looking for more uh, more hotel sites. How would you describe your management style? My sorry. Your management style. <laughs> uh, well, it's had to evolve. Um, I, I would say that when I joined the business, we were a lot smaller. I used to know pretty much everything that was going on, knew most of our managers. And so, uh, but then you realize as you grow and if you want to be successful, um, you, have to, you have to hire 
you know, amazing people. And you have to delegate and you have to let go. And so these were skills that, that uh, I, wasn't, I didn't start out with necessarily, but I, I realized that you know, if I wanted to, to grow the business. And, and so you know, since I've been president, we've doubled the size of our business in five years, three times already. And we're in the midst of, you know, uh, the next seven years, I think we'll do it again. So um, you can't do that without, you know, amazing people and, and hiring people with, with better skill sets than yourself. And, and then, you know, making sure, you know, that the environment is such that, uh, that they can thrive. And so, um, so these are skills that I've, I've had to learn along the way and, and relied on uh, others to teach, uh, to teach me. And uh, uh, so uh, I would say that, you know, becoming a, a delegator is something that uh, I've had to embrace and not, and not all that naturally. So speaking of that team around you, um, have they been with you a while? Is there longevity there or how, I mean, what does that look like? Um, yeah, it's funny. In, in the last five years, we've turned over almost all of our senior management team in Vancouver. So um, the answer is not really. Um, uh, some of the, a uh, couple of the long time 30, 40 year guys are still coming to work, you know, a couple days a week and really, really helpful with helping the new guys navigate, understand our culture, understand what's made us successful. And so that's been really helpful during the transition. But, you know, the, our, uh, our top, uh, Northland president is uh, on the job two years now, and uh, most of our senior management team is uh, is under five years. So it's been a it's been a pretty big transition in the middle of a bunch of growth as well. So um, and it's also a deeper bench. The the senior management team now is twice the size that it was five years ago. So it's been a lot of uh, a lot of work. Um, you know, in Dallas, uh, when I bought the team, I brought back Jim Lights, who was the longtime. Uh, president of the team, and he brought in uh, Brad Alberts, and so the the plan here is the way it, it's supposed to work. You know, you hire from within, and uh, Brad came up and did a marvelous job on on uh, on the revenue side of the stars, and and uh, and then a, a year or two ago, um, Jimmy stepped aside and became chairman, and now Brad's the CEO of the stars, and and so you know Brad's uh, got a great a great runway ahead of him here, so. Uh, that's the ideal way to be. I think uh, five years ago, I had to go to the outside to bring up some senior management people in, which is, which is not ideal. I think, uh, I think some fresh people from the outside is healthy, but my preference is always to, is to develop internally and, and hire that way. So um, I've been fortunate, though. We've, we've brought a lot of new people in, and, and, and uh, it's worked out, so, which is not always the case. Uh, but in, in the stars, we've got some wonderful uh, young executives like Matt Bowman, who's here, and, uh, and uh, uh, lots of guys with a bright future. Even an old washed up goalie, Marty Turco, too, who's, who's transitioned well to the business, uh, the business side of, uh, of hockey. If I asked all of your employees to describe you in one word, what would the most popular answer be? Yeah, uh, well, there's a few, but uh, the one I heard lately was determined, so um, I, that's, that would be one of them. Okay, five years from now, how different will your business look? What's the, what are the biggest changes you expect? Uh, I, you know, I'm pretty focused in, in what we're up to, so I don't think it'll look a lot different other than I think we'll just be a lot bigger. So we're not, we're not really going into new areas. Um, you know, I think our, our residential development side of the business is, is really going to grow. That's a, it's a fairly new business for us. Um, our core business is building and owning and operating hotels. And so that's really what I like to do and, and our core competency. Um, but but multi-res development um, is, I would say in five years, will be a, will be a much bigger business um, than it is today for us. So... Other than that, I think Moxie's gonna to continue to grow. I think uh, um, our resorts will continue to grow and our hotel group will, uh, will, uh, will continue to grow. So I don't, I don't think it'll look a lot different, but you know, it should be a lot bigger. 
So gambling, pretty hot topic right now. Um, look with the legislature in session, whether we're gonna get sports betting or resort style gambling, at least in front of the voters. What are you rooting for and what do you think will happen? Well, I think it's, I think it's, it's time to embrace gambling. I think, uh, um, you know, politically, I don't think it's been very popular in, in, in some of the red states. And, and, uh, um, but the fact of the matter is I'm, I'm, I'm down here with a buddy of mine from Calgary who's been on his phone gambling the entire time. So <laughs> not successfully either, I might add. So whether you like it or not, people are gambling on their phones. And so um, why the state isn't legalizing it and taking their piece, um, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a big revenue source. So um, my belief is we'll see gambling uh, approve the next legislature. Um, uh, I personally not sure about bricks and mortar, how I feel about that. Um, and it feels like that might be a stretch for, for, for Texas at this stage, but uh, um, uh, I do think that, you know, online gambling is, is it's already here. And so um, I think it's, I think that the winds are blowing and I think uh, there's a really good chance that gets passed and bricks and mortar I'm, I'm not certain about. Is it, a, is it a game changer for the STARS organization and your business interests if it happens? No, no, I don't think it is. Uh, uh, I, think, I think though what we've seen around the league and in sports generally is, you know, it's a big ad, they're big advertisers. So I would say that there's, a, there'll be an uptick in, in advertising spend and uh, for us. And then the question is, what is it going to do in terms of more eyeballs? Because the more eyeballs on a sport, um, you know, that tends to, that tends to uh, you know, grow revenues. I mean, look at the, the NFL's done so well on the back of gambling, really, and, and driven these massive TV deals that have made these teams so valuable. And so, you know, I think gambling will, will certainly help uh, uh, raise the boat. Uh, I don't think it's a game changer, but I think, I mean, this, the, the ad spend will be, will, will be significant. So, uh, you know, that's exciting. And, uh, but there's, 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 there's lots of risks and, 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 and there's things that are on the horizon that are wins. And then there's, there's also things on the horizon that are, that are risks. So I don't think it's all great news, but, um, but gambling gonna be, is gonna be, uh, gonna be helpful. So Bill mentioned that you bought the last two undeveloped properties around American Airlines Center, where the Stars and the Mavericks play, and remind us what your plans are for those. Well, you know, we don't know. Um, uh, I, just, I just thought that um, I, I think American Airlines Center is an amazing arena. Uh, the Stars would, would, would be happy to play there for a long time, and, and we just really wanted to be in control of what got built there. And we thought that we needed to, uh, in terms of securing our future, um, uh, you know, build build something spectacular that would make American Airlines Center, you know, the, you know, a, a, a real draw for a long time. And so, it was part of just controlling our our our, our future. And uh, I mean, they're fabulous sites and and a, and a fabulous market. So, um, I'm not sure what we'll build. There's uh, there's you know, well over a million feet of, of buildable. Uh, that we're we're fitted to do. So, I think uh, my best guess would be would be mixed use. Um, you know, like a hotel. Uh, I see uh, multifamily, and uh, and uh, I'm not sure about condos. I mean, Dallas is an interesting market. Uh, it's a it's a market that condos really haven't worked at. Where we've had success with condos in Austin, and condos work in many markets around the world, but uh, haven't really taken off in Dallas. So. I'm not sure that there'll be uh, will be condos, but uh, anyway, we'll we'll see. And then, to the extent that that you know gambling happens, um, you know some of the gambling partners we've talked to are well. We'd love to build a gambling hotel. So um, who knows? But at least we have the land. We control the land, and and uh, and, and 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 we think that'll uh, that'll help us in the future. Are you looking to buy more property in the area? In the area. I think we're we're pretty exposed. I'd say I'm more, more focused on on, uh, on on DFW and other markets in DFW. I mean, we've got three big development sites right now around American Line Center, so I I'd say that's enough for now. 
And so just to zero in on what you're talking about as far as the arena with the Mavericks, your, your long-term plan is you're happy sharing the arena with the Mavericks and would like it to be a long-term home? Well, yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been a huge success. And, and that part of the city just gets you know, more vibrant all the time if you, if you get there. I remember when I got here 11 years ago, it was a pretty sleepy part of town. And uh, you can't call it sleepy anymore. So it, it's an exciting area. And, you know, the whole city was designed around that being arena in terms of mass transit and, uh, and, and the like. And we've got, you know, parking and all these things. So it's, it's really hard to duplicate that. Um, the arena is the second busiest in, in the U.S. and sixth busiest in the world. So it is a highly successful arena uh, with extremely solid management sitting about 15 yards away from me. So I, I need to call them out too, Craig Corson and his team there. But it's a marvelous place, and so we, 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 uh, uh, we, we love it, and uh, we hope that uh, our partner uh, in the arena will, uh, will, will stay long-term too, but we're not so sure about that. All right. Let's get back to the stars. <laughs> All right, you bought them in 2011. They've had one 100-point season. This year's team is on that pace right now. Is this the best team you've had, the one right now? I, I don't know yet. Um, I think it's, it's, it's probably the best team we've had in terms of uh, the young guys being our best players and really driving things. I don't think we've ever had that before to this extent. Um, you know, when Jamie and Tyler were younger, they were, they were, they were really good. And then, but our teams that were good over the past, uh, uh, you know, decade or so, were were highly driven by veterans. And uh, this team, this team really isn't. So it's a different team, and um, I, I, it, it may well be the deepest team we've had. And uh, but I, I we'll see how this this group does. But lots of positive signs. I mean, whenever we have a, a, a bad uh, stretch, we lose a game or two, they bounce back hard. That's a really good sign. To, uh, they, they, we, we, we haven't allowed, it, uh, allowed ourselves to have any uh, prolonged losing uh, streaks, and so that's a really good sign of your group. So, yeah, speaking of that young core, so you've got 23-year-old defenseman Miro Heiskanen? Heiskanen. Heiskanen, yeah. thank you. All right, and he's, he's signed through 2020. Nine. You've also got Jason Robertson and Jake Odinger. They've, they've got shorter term deals. What's, what's realistic for fans to expect whether you're going to be able to keep that core group together as far as long term vision? Well, I, I think uh, teams are about cores. And so to the extent that these guys are in our core, then we'll plan to keep them. And, um, you know, there's a, there's, there's a lot of planning that goes into these things in terms of. You know, a guy like Robertson who comes off in four years, uh, up in four years, if, if he's somebody that we believe in, then, you know, we'll be looking at a long-term, likely very expensive deal uh, uh, for him. Uh, he's, he is quite a talent, and, uh, and, and we'll have the room to do that. So, um, you know, it's always, there's always a plan in, in, in place in terms of, you know, if you, if you just sit and look at it like we do, you go years out, and you know, this guy's gonna, probably going to get a big a big bump in pay here. He's probably a guy we want to be on our team, you know, long term. And then you have, you know, well, you know, rich expiring contracts that are going to correspond with those. So, you know, Jamie and Tyler are, are two of the bigger earners on the team, and uh, their contracts will be up in the future. And so, you know, they'll either re up here or their money will go to the next guy. So uh, I would say that Jake Ottinger, you know, Robertson. Haskin and Hintz now are, are, are locked in for eight years, so we don't have to worry about them for a while. But cottinger has got three, and Robertson's got four, so uh, that's a lot of time. You know, we'll have lots of time to, to plan, and presumably those are guys we're going to want to keep in Dallas long term. And if that's the case, then uh, we'll be ready to do that, as we've uh, always done managing the team. We, we haven't lost any uh, core players due to salary cap issues under uh, Jim Nill's management, so uh, I don't expect that to happen. So speaking of Jim Nell, in April he's going to celebrate his 10th anniversary as the Stars general manager. Pete DeBoer is his fifth head coaching hire. It seems like there's few owners in sports who would show a GM that much patience. So can you talk about that working relationship and, and how, that's, how that's worked and, 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 and the patience you've had in that? Yeah, I think it's a little unfair. 
I, I, you know, I, I know I read these comments about Jim having five coaches, and so, um, you know, GMs, uh, a 10-year GM is, is very common in the league. It's not a job that flips over often, and, you know, when you get a, when you get a, a really solid, stable, smart, seasoned, you know, balanced decision maker like Jim Nell, that there's really no need to, uh, 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 to, to, you know, I, I, I think it's like anything in, in, in management. It's a process. You know, you have issues and, you know, you work on them and you figure out what you're going to do together. And Jim's been very collaborative and we have a good relationship. And so um, I, 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 I think that uh, at some point, you know, he's, he's, he's getting up there in age. This is, a, this is a, I don't think people understand what a brutal job being an NHL general manager is. It's very, very taxing. And uh, at some point, you know, I don't know that he's going to want to carry on. So, um, you know, our, 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 our hope would be to have a, have a replacement that comes from within. Uh, I think uh, I, I'd always rather work with the guy I know than flipping out and getting some guy in that you, you don't really know. So, um, you know, we've had some disappointing seasons. You always do in sports. And so uh, we've chosen to... Uh, to keep Jim and, and work with them, and I think that's that's over the over uh, time that's been a, a good decision. I, I think on the five coats thing, that's a, a a bit tough in terms of you know Jim Montgomery uh, came here and had some personal problems that nobody could have predicted, and and he's now in Boston and they got the the number one team in the league. So you know Jim was right to hire him. He's a heck of a coach. It's not Jim's fault that he. He lost his way personally, and uh, and you know made it impossible to carry on here. Um, you know, I'd say before that, Ken Hitchcock was only ever going to be a one or two year guy, and uh, people say, well, that was that was not not a good decision to bring him in. Uh, I I argue that uh, uh, we came out of a we came out of a four year run under Lindy where we were really good and then we were really bad, and we realized that if we didn't change our team identity to have structure and defensive integrity, we weren't going to have success. And so Hitch was brought in on a one-year deal, and uh, he changed our identity in one year. And that's an identity that's served us very well, got us to the Stanley Cup final two years ago, has got us in the first place now. This identity doesn't happen without Ken Hitchcock. And so uh, I would have liked to see Ken last longer than one year, but it just wasn't really in the cards for a bunch of reasons. But I don't look at that as, uh, as, as, a, as a negative on the organization or anybody. Ken was always going to be a short-term idea, but he did his job. And Monty came in after that. We had a pretty good team for a couple of years under Jim and, and uh, you know, couldn't get by St. Louis in seven games. And, and, uh, but uh, I, I like where we're at. I like our, our identity. And so I think Pete's done a marvelous job, as I said. Um, tweaking our team, and, you know, the young guys have helped, too. I mean, we've got young guys who, who are putting the puck in the net that, that weren't here a year or two ago, so it's made a big difference. I think it's fair to say that you have a lower profile than some of the other major league team owners in the area. <laughs> so I'm wondering, what is your relationship with them? Like, do you connect with Mark Cuban and Jerry Jones and Ray Davis? Are you guys leaning on each other? Is there a secret, you know, monthly meeting? What does it look like? <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll tell you a really, really funny story. So when I bought the team, uh, I got a call from Ray Davis, and he said, Tom, I said, hi, it's Ray Davis, T Texas Rangers. Said, oh, Mr. Davis, how are you? Great. He goes, I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm going, oh, okay. He goes, you know, we went to the same college together. And, you know, Ray's got to be, I don't know, 30, 30 years older than me, you know, and then, and I said, well, I said, Laterno College in Longview, Texas. I said, oh, Mr. Davis, you mean my father. He said, oh. So I, connect, I connected them. <laughs> he said, I thought it was you. I said, no, oh, yeah. And uh, anyway, we've become friends. We've had, uh, we've, we've chatted with a couple of lunches. And, uh, and the Rangers are very close to us. We've got some Rangers uh, execs that work with us. And, and uh, they're, they're, they're great. We help each other out. And, and uh uh, and we're good friends with Neil and, and Ray and, and the ownership group. So, you know, classy group and um, disappointed they haven't had more success lately. 
Uh, Mark Cuban, obviously, our building partner, so we have a ongoing relationship with, and you know, he's uh, he's Mark. I, I we need another session to talk about Mark, I think, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, overall, uh, as I say, the arena operates successfully, and 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 uh, you know, most days are great partners. Um, and uh, uh, the Jones, I, I've gotten to know Stephen Jones uh, quite well. In fact, did a uh, did a real estate transaction with them, and, and uh, they're, they're wonderful, nice people. And so um, I don't see them all the time, but uh, do get together with Stephen uh, periodically. And uh, and uh, disappointed for their result yesterday, but uh, they've all been really great, really supportive people. And that's that's Texas generally. I mean, just really we we get treated very well here. So speaking of, I'm wondering if you have any kind of rivalry with Tom Dundon, the Dallas billionaire who bought the Carolina Hurricanes? Yeah, no. No, we're in different conferences. We're friends. We've become friends, and, uh, and uh, we talk uh, a lot, but we only play each other twice a year. It's pretty hard to have a rivalry, but, uh, uh, you know, we play each other. There's no question we each want to win. But those days, you know, we never text each other before or after those games because nothing really you can say. <laughs> but, you know, he's an interesting guy. I think he's been, uh, for those of you who know him, he's, he's been a bit of a fresh, a, a fresh viewpoint in the league because he's an outside guy. He's not a hockey guy. He's come in and he's, he's done things his own way and he's, he's, he's uh, rocked some things. I think a, lo a lot of it for the good. So I think he's been... Uh, He's been interesting to uh, to get to know and, and and to watch manage and you know he he came into Carolina they hadn't been good for a long time so they had a lot of good players they got in the draft and and he's done a good job taking them where they are and they're one of the favorites to win the cup. Can you make Luka Doncic a hockey fan? Is yeah. he a hockey fan? I don't know. Is, is he, does he come to our games? I don't know. I, Seems like something. Uh, he's he's lost the cap the Cowboys. You know he needs a side hustle. Yeah, I don't. You know some. We have cowboy, a lot of cowboys come to the, our games, and uh, some rangers. I've not met Luca, but uh, uh, he's from Slovenia, and uh, the captain of the Kings is a Slovenian. I'm sure they know each other, small town. So maybe he's a hockey fan, but uh, yeah, what a play, what a ball player, though! Holy cow! Um, so I've, I'm I'm new to Dallas, um, but I've been to the Stars games, and I was really impressed with um, the hockey knowledge of the fans. Um, you know, I moved here from Florida, and so I'm used to used to Sun Belt hockey fans being uh, being smart. But I was just super impressed, and I'm wondering what's what surprised you at all about about the fans here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're known as being the best Southern market in the, in the NHL. I mean, we've been here for uh, 30 years now, right? 30 years in the market. So, yeah, it's it's. Uh, it is uh, it, it's impressive, and I agree with you. There's a there's a lot of knowledge of the market here, and and so I, I just wish we could we could have teams like we used to have, which really matter to to people in this market, which is you know big tough fighting teams and teams that are rough and hit and fight, but the league's gone the other direction, you know. And so what's what's great about this market is just the just how popular those guys you know are, and the problem is you know you get big tough guys that can fight, you know, fighting's a small part of the game today, and, you know, if you can't skate and play and play with speed, you can't play, so, uh, but it's a marvelous market, it's, uh, it's just huge and dynamic, and, and what's, what's interesting about it is that, you know, you've got so much migration in the, in the U.S., you know, like you, uh, you know, Chicago, uh, Midwest, Detroit, uh, Boston, uh, all these all people relocating to Dallas for all the reasons, uh, and they're all hockey fans. So um, it does it does annoy us when when you know Detroit comes to town and every, all these Dallas people bring their Detroit jerseys out. But but we've been beating them so much lately. You see a lot fewer, a lot fewer of them in the arena. But uh, <laughs> but it, it's interesting because that migration is is bringing more and more hockey fans to the market and 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 lots of lots of uh, hockey knowledge to the market. So it's just going to get better and better. Okay, your family comes to visit DFW. Where do you take them? Out to eat, you mean? Eat, like eat, oh. attraction. Where, where, how are you entertaining them? Yeah, well, we favorite places. We like to watch the teams, sure. you know, practice. My, you know, and, and where do we go to eat? Where do we go? We go. Uh, well, you know, Moxie's obviously. Right? 
shameless plug there. Uh, I think back at some of the, the institutions in Dallas. I mean, I always like to take people from, from uh, I haven't been to Dallas before, to Javier's. It's such a unique place. And uh, it's, it's like you can't even describe it to people. And so that's really cool. And they let you smoke cigars, so that's a big plus. And you don't get that anywhere anymore. So, you know, places like Albernay's is, is just a classic. I mean, I remember when I had friends playing for the Dallas Stars back in the 90s. That's where we went. And so uh, still there, still great. Nick and Sam's is, is a marvelous place. Um, those to me are the sort of institutions that, that I make sure that all my friends get a chance to see and experience. Cool. All right, last question. Of all the things you're responsible for, what keeps you up at night? The stupid hockey team when it loses. I, <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about it. It's funny about sports, you know. It, it, you know, people who, you know, people in this room and people who who own these teams are kind of used to winning a lot more than they lose, you know. And so, uh, you know, in sports, if you're if you're 550 or 600, you know, you're you're pretty good. And and so, you know, losing 40% of the time isn't that isn't that appealing. And and uh, I don't manage that very well, to be honest. It's hard. So I'd say that I I think I think the things that keep you awake at night are the are the macro things that you 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 can't control. You know, if if, if hard work if effective leadership can fix a lot of problems. Um, but there's things that you can't fix. And, you know, for us in hospitality, you know, COVID came and, <clears throat> you know, we thought it was going to be a three or four month blip and it turned into something a lot worse than that. So um, it, it's interesting. You know, those things are, you wonder, you know, is this thing ever going to recover? Uh, is just COVID just going to continue to present itself? And... Uh, how long is it going to last, and what is the financial damage that our industry is going to take, and am I going to make it? You know, there's all those questions that come in your mind, and so that's a pretty unsettling feeling. I've never really felt like that before, and so I think it, I think it taught a lot of people. I know what it did for me. Um, it, 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 it taught, it, I mean, I learned a whole bunch of skills through COVID, you know, one of which is letting go of what you can't control. So I think what keeps you awake, the things you can't control, but then to survive COVID mentally. And, you know, you, you understand, we, you know, we're, a, we're a company of 14,000 employees, and, you know, we had to lay off people, people got hours cut, people left the industry. So it wasn't just you, it was all these people in our industry that were all getting hurt. And so... Um, it was it was it was extremely difficult, men, you know, mentally, and so, you know, in order to get through it and be a and be the leader that you know that I needed to be, um, I needed to, uh, you know, to work on some skills, and you know, one of which was you have to let go of what you can't control. So, I didn't think that was a very big personal and a business challenge to get through. And of course, you know, in Texas, there was no COVID, of course. <laughs> Florida, too, for that matter. But, you know, and in Canada, we took it very seriously, and, and the government certainly overreacted. Um, but it's, it was, it, more governments around the world overreacted than, than underreacted. And so um, it was, it was a, pr a, pretty big, uh, a pretty big challenge to, uh, to get through. And then, of course, now we're living with the aftermath of of governments doing what governments do, which are overreact, and now we're dealing with you know crazy inflation, and which has caused interest rates to have to go up. You know, I think Fed raised rates seven times down here in 22. So, and we're all living that now, and uh, we are in Canada as well. The governments uh, stepped up and and helped businesses and helped people that worked, but they helped them too much. And so we're dealing with the same issues in terms of inflation and rates in, in Canada. So um, unfortunately, I think the, the Fed will continue to do it here and overreact and raise rates uh, probably higher than they, than they need to. So it's like the old adage, you know, the, the cure might be worse than the hangover. So we'll see what happens. But uh, certainly, certainly if I have one worry, um, it's, it's interest rates. I think uh, I think uh, I think inflation will will come into check here by the end of the year. Um, 
but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure the interest rates are, uh, are going to uh, ever be back to where they were, and I think that our industry is probably going to have to deal with, with, with 6%, you know, 6 you know, percent interest rates for, for some period of time, uh, which historically hasn't been a bad number, but it, it certainly does affect uh, viability in everybody's underwriting strategies. Um, and, and I'd like to think the interest rates will come down, but I, 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 I just don't know when, that, when and if that'll happen. Thank you. I think we're good. And on a good note, right? Yeah. Well, Tom, we're really happy to have you in the real estate community in Dallas. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate having this amazing program, the most elusive uh, sports owner in North Texas, and we love having you here. Um, and I think everyone in this room is definitely a Stars fan, and if they would have showed up with a Detroit jersey on, I would have kicked them out. Just so you know, we're pretty loyal. Uh, great program today, but I also want to point out Tom, not only have you built a great franchise here, you've built a great team. And so Brad, Marty, all the other team uh, also participate with us. And you look on the screen, we celebrated um, with your stars when they contributed $2 million and made a commitment to our partner in the Forest District. And the work we're doing in South Dallas is very important to our organization. And a lot of the people that are here today are very engaged in that. So we appreciate that the culture that you've built here, the contributions that you make, how, how you activate your fans to do good th for the community is really, really important. So thanks, Brad and Marty and the rest of the STARS team. <laughs> now, I, there was one thing I don't think Christian told you, and thank you, Christian, for arranging this today because uh, we really appreciate it. I don't think he told you that there is a, there is a hook to this. <laughs> When you win the Stanley Cup, you have to come back with it. <laughs> I'll gladly be here. Okay, great. <laughs> well, we wish your team a lot of luck tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. We're all going to be watching. Uh, we also are very appreciative of our sponsors, Bank of Texas, Stuart Title. Thank you, Global Pro. And thank you to American Airlines Center for being here today. We really appreciate all the support of all of you. And we're really looking forward to a great 2023, so make sure you perform that hat trick and, and uh, t take a picture of the QR code and get, get involved. We do have a great year of programs. Bill Brokaw is leading us in programs this year, and I know his standard is excellence, so you can just be sure that everything you see this year is going to be amazing. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the things you do for our community, and let's have a great 23. And Christian? Go Stars! Go stars.